Okay, uh, here we are again to how to build a dinghy in uh, your spare room. And today uh, I'm going to be preparing the front section um, of the boat for fiberglassing and epoxy coating on the inside. So the outside of the aft section has been done inside and out and the underside of the forward section has been done on the outside. So now it's about preparing the inside. So uh, it all needs a good sand down. Uh, so I already did quite a bit of that last time, but I need to sand down the, the mast step because that got uh, an epoxy coating just to smooth it off last time. So that needs to be uh, sanded off. And then there were just a few other little areas that I didn't get around to doing last time, so those need to be done. Also, I need to drill a hole in the forward section of the bow here to put a painter through. <coughs> uh, and there's one or two other little jobs that have to be done. So. Uh, it's just mainly about getting the, uh, the front bit prepped. So that's pretty much it. So uh, let's get going. sanding and just look at drilling the hole in this uh, the bow section so the idea is you put a hole through the bow above the forward tank and uh, that hole bit then gets cut with epoxy on the inside and then you push a painter through the hole and tie a knot on both sides of the hole basically so then you've got uh, a secure attachment without having to use any hardware um, another idea would have been to use probably uh, one of these u-bolts uh, inside the forward tank, lower down, um, so that that's not going to bash into anything, and then attach a painter to that quite low down at the front. But I didn't like that idea because you know, if this is attached to the, the bow like this, then any sideways pull is going to tend to make that twist, uh, and any twisting is going to potentially damage the hole at that forward point, which is still going to start letting water in, and then you've lost your forward pointy tank. So uh, I didn't really want to put hardware in that kind of vulnerable spot and subject it to lots of loads. So I decided against that view and just go with the simple approach of drilling a hole. Yeah, I'm going to start off with a 6mm drill um, and then I'm going to widen that to a 10. I've got a 10 10mm 10 drill there and I'll probably then just widen that out slightly to make it about 11 or 12. But the trick is, I suppose, to get this hole just above the deck and it's going to go through this reinforcement here um, so what, what I've put underneath underneath the forward forward knee and above the, uh, the forward deck is a piece of um, hardwood about the same well, it came from this piece of wood here which I got from the uh, timber yard and uh, I cut a piece of the right height and I cut a V into it and then sanded it down to fit and then put loads of epoxy around it because I don't want any air voids in there. And that, that is one of my concerns. When I drill through this, if I drill through an air void, how am I going to fill that once it's inside a hole? Um, but it's going to be done. So let's start. Let's start with this 6 millimeter hole. I'm going to try and drill it fairly horizontal.
Okay, I think that's it. I can uh, see all the way through the hole and uh, the good news is I can't see any voids, so that is fantastic. So, um, so it's drilling through six sheets of fiberglass tape covered in epoxy, then through uh, basically a one inch piece of hardwood and then through some epoxy that was backfilling that and then through the hull which is quarter inch plywood but at the front there was probably more epoxy in the V and then through another layer of fiberglass on the outside so I just need to tidy up that outside section smooth it off uh, and then I can get on the sanding the rest of the inside and I'll be ready for epoxying Okay, very good. Thanks. So that first coat has been curing overnight and uh, I'm just going to use the gloves and check and it's still a little bit tacky in some places. I'm pretty sure that that's now ready for the second coat. So uh, I've prepared two containers and I'm expecting to take approximately 300 mils to do this coat. It took 500 mils to do the last coat and because of the um, absorption of the, the cloth, the fiberglass cloth, it takes a bit more when you put in the cloth on. So um, I'm going to do 150 first and uh, if that's a bit much I can drop down to 120. Uh, otherwise I'm going to put, I'm planning to do about two 150s. So let's just do the first one and see how far it goes.
Okay, so it's now about five hours later, uh, five and a half hours later since the last coat was finished, and it's still a tiny bit tacky, but um, it doesn't leave a mark in the surface. So I think it's now sufficiently dry for the third and final coat. So uh, I'm going to mix 150 mils, and on the last coat, two lots of 150 was a little bit too much. So I'm going to do 150 and 120 in two mixes. And <clears throat> as last time, I'm going to use a roller and tray, and then I'll use a brush to touch up any, any tight corners that I can't quite get into. So, uh, as ever, I'm going to wear my vapor-proof mask and two pairs of the nitrile gloves. So, uh, let's get cracking. Okay, that's the third coat now done, and uh, use the roller throughout, apart from a few hard to reach corners where I've used the brush and the holes that I've got drilled for the cord in the centerboard case and the hole for the painter at the front. I've had to use a very tiny craft brush for that. So that's now all finished. So I need to leave this now for a few days to, uh, to cure. and. Uh, and then the next stage we'll be thinking about uh, sanding it down and getting some primer on. So, uh, time to start researching primer. Okay, if you've uh, enjoyed watching it, please leave a like. And uh, don't forget you can subscribe in the button down below. Cheers.